So, I had a lot of high hopes for Wolong, and that was because it looked like this fusion between Sekiro and Neo. And for those of you that don't know, Sekiro is one of my favorite games of all time. I played through it multiple times to get the different endings, as well as doing the gauntlets or reflections of strength to the point that I would learn to do them without dying or taking damage. So when I say I love Sekiro, I truly mean it. But the thing is, is that I don't find Wolong as refined or as well thought out as Sekiro, and I don't find it as deep as a game like Neo. Neo 2. So Wolong feels like a step backwards and an awkward mishmash at the same time. So with that out of the way, let's just get into this review starting off with the combat. Now there's aspects about the combat that I do really like, for example the deflection and spirit system because I'm a huge fan of Sekiro. Although I'd say this game is even more focused on deflections because you don't have to worry about dodging perilous attacks or jumping over sweep attacks, you can just deflect anything including magic. But Wolong somehow made the flexions feel even better. I mean, look at this. This shit feels good, especially when you parry a critical attack, break their posture, and then go for a fatal blow, it all feels really satisfying. But this aspect starts to bring us to a bit of a problem because you start to figure out that parrying these critical blows and doing these fatal attacks feel like your primary source of damage to posture and health. So because of that, it makes defending other forms of attack kind of unrewarding and doing other forms of offense a little hard because finding an opening can be a little difficult at times. So sometimes fights just become you waiting and praying that they do these special red attacks just so you can parry it and do some meaningful damage. But sometimes the enemies and bosses just fucking refuse to do these attacks so you're barely making any progress in some of these fights. But then there's moments where they spam nothing but these attacks and the fights are finished in an instant and that's the problem I have, it's like the flow of combat is just so random, there's no consistency. Another problem I have is the lack of visual clarity. What the fuck is going on on my screen? At times, I can't tell what's simple movement, what's an attack, or what I'm even deflecting. And that's the thing, I find some of the attacks in this game are just a visual fucking overload, and I can't decipher when I should time my deflect. There's other issues as well. For one, this game would have really benefited from an attack cancel, because right now, doing weapon abilities feels fucking pointless. And finding openings for heavy attacks, or as this game calls it, Spirit attacks can be pretty difficult at times, and it mainly feels safe to do after you parry a boss's critical hit, which brings us back to the issue of just waiting for these red attacks. But sometimes you're not even worried about playing well or defending yourself because you can sometimes just spam magic and screw a boss up the ass. The flow of combat just feels like a mess. And that's the thing, the more I got into these fights, the more I would rather just be playing Sekiro, and that's the worst feeling to have when you're just thinking about another game while playing another one. But thinking about it actually felt like a breath of fresh air could actually tell what's happening, because for the most part, that game is really refined. There's a sense of rhythm or flow, and that's the key thing, rhythm. You can kind of treat the enemies and bosses in that game as sort of music sheets, but when you get really good at the game, you sort of adapt your own music. It's this balance between attacking and defending, this beautiful tug of war, this stunning dance of blades. And whether you're attacking, deflecting, countering thrusts, or Goomba stomping on a boss's head, you are making progress in this fight. Because once that posture meter fills up all the way, you do one attack and their health bar fucking disappears. Your offense is your defense and your defense is your offense. It's like they're one and the same. But in Wolong, it's all split and all over the place. It just feels like your defense is only good sometimes and your offense is only good sometimes. It's like they don't really synergize. It just feels like there's no flow and that's what made Sekiro really work. But here's the thing. My issues with the combat system are definitely exacerbated due to the kind of player I am, as well as this one in-game system. The fucking morale system. This shit's stinky. It's pretty much a deciding factor of how difficult this game is, and it's in the most artificial way possible. The higher your morale rank, the stronger you are, you'll deal more damage and take less, but the higher the morale rank of the enemy, the tankier they are and more damage they'll deal to you. It's the difference between being two-shot, being on an even playing field, or just stomping. 
For example, I ended up in a boss with a max 25 morale rank, and I beat him on my first try. And this wasn't an early game boss, this was around like halfway through the game. That's how decisive this system is for the difficulty. So typically, I would play against the bosses at a lower morale rank to give myself a more suitable challenge. But this is the aspect that made me realize just how messy the combat system actually is, because consistency and mistakes matter a whole lot more. The room for error is little. And something I hate about the morale system is the reliance on these stupid stupid fucking flagpoles. You're pretty much forced to go around the map planting these flags because it raises the minimum your morale can drop to if you die. And the thing is, is that depending on the kind of player you are, you might not mind this at all. For example, if you're somewhat of a completionist where if you're dropped into a level, you have to search every nook and cranny before you move on. If you're that kind of player, you might not mind the morale system and you might have a really easy time with this game. But if you're a player like me, where you're more freeform, where you pick a direction, you go with the flow, and if it leads you to something bigger and badder, so be it, you're up for the challenge. But I'm telling you now, the game punishes you for playing like that, because if you don't find these flagpoles, you're gonna make the game really difficult on yourself. Unless you're Angbal, you're probably gonna have trouble fighting these bosses at such a low morale rank. And I wouldn't mind looking for these flagpoles if I actually enjoyed the level design. You see, it's similar to the Neo games, and actually, it could be better in some ways because there's more verticality. You can actually jump around the map and get like a drop on enemies. Although sometimes the game doesn't do a good job of distinguishing what you can and can't jump over, even though it looks like you can jump over. So it's a little strange. But overall, I like the idea of the levels and their kind of interconnected structure, but the problem is, is that these levels are just plagued with ranged enemies, and if you don't have arrows to take care of them, sometimes you're fucked because you can't really find a way up to them to dispatch them. The most annoying thing for me though, is that the way this game tries to make exploration difficult is by putting one tough enemy, and then surrounding them with other enemies, so you're doing the tried and true method of leading them away from the pack. Which is fine, but it becomes tedious when it seems to be this way like all the fucking time. And speaking of the enemies, there's a very low enemy variety in this game. I think it might be lower than Neo 1, but I'm not sure. But point is, going through these levels fighting the same things becomes so fucking tiring. So at some point, I just wanted to run through the game, but you can't do so because you need to raise your morale rank by killing enemies and planting these fucking flagpoles. So for most of my playthrough, I was just forced to do things I didn't like in order to get to the parts that I did enjoy, which were the boss fights. Even though I found the combat to be very messy, I still had more fun in the boss fights than I did with anything else in this game. I just really hated that I had to search around the map for these flagpoles just to be on an even playing field with the bosses. And man, I haven't even gotten into the RPG mechanics of this game. To be blunt, it's a lot more simplified and not as deep as in Neo games. But that's not a big issue for me, it's sort of a plus, although the game still suffers from the metric fuckton of loot, but I can get over it. Something I really like though, is how easy it is to respec your character and switch between different builds on the fly. I think this kind of flexibility is really nice, it's just I wasn't interested in trying different builds because I wasn't a fan of the general mechanics of this game. And here's the thing, it's a real shame because I really wanted to like Wolong. I was really excited for this game, I played through the demo multiple times, but the demo is not really a good reflection of how the rest of this game actually turns out, which is really saddening for me. But before I say I just flat out don't recommend it, like I said before, it depends on the kind of player you are. If you're someone that's more of a completionist and you like to search every nook and cranny, you might not mind things like the morale system and you might have an easy time with this game. If you're more of someone like me that just kind of goes with the flow and you're not worried about finding everything, you might have a lot of trouble with this game. It can really punish you and make other systems feel messy because of it. I really wanted to like this game, but it simply didn't click like I thought it would and it's really sad for me. Anyhow, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Leave a like or dislike depending on whether you agree or not, and I hope I can see your comments down below because I'd love to hear your thoughts whether you played the game or not. Peace.